Hello, I am Dr. Y.S. Rajput, Emeritus Scientist in the Department of Animal Biochemistry, National Dairy Research Institute, Karnal. Welcome to EPG Patsala. Today, I am going to teach you salt fractionation of proteins under biochemical techniques. Proteins are polymers of amino acids wherein one amino acid is joined to another amino acid by peptide bond. There are 22 different amino acids and several amino acids are present in proteins. To each amino acid, one carboxyl group, one amino group, one hydrogen atom and one side chain are attached to single carbon atom. Carboxyl group and amino group are involved in peptide bond formation. Side chain of amino acid is different for different amino acids. These may contain carboxylic group, amino group, guanidinyl group, imidazole group, hydrophobic moiety, aromatic structure, hydroxyl group, sulfhydryl group and others. Some of the side chains will have affinity towards water while others may not. The number of amino acids and their side chain will affect their solubility behavior. Large number of different proteins are present in cell homogenate and purified proteins are required for understanding their function. Fractionation is a term similar to purification. It is normally not possible to purify protein in single step. Fractionation is usually the first step in purification of protein. It will allow precipitation of proteins including interested proteins having similar solubility behavior. Addition of salt or solvent such as acetone will decrease the solubility of different protein to different extent. At desired concentration of salt, some proteins will precipitate while others do not. These aspects will be covered in present presentation. In today's lecture, we will look at a very focused component of protein purification which is salt fractionation of proteins. Salt fractionation is a technique which helps to fractionate or separate proteins which are precipitated on the basis of different salt concentrations. We will look at the detail of this in the following few sections. This shows the concept map that will be followed in this lecture. We will first study importance of protein purification. Then we will elaborate what we mean by protein fractionation. Salts are commonly used for fractionation of protein. This aspect will also be covered in presentation. Concept of salting in and salting out will be clearly delineated. Ammonium sulphate is widely used salt for fractionation of protein. Reasons of using this salt will be explained. The presentation will also include effectiveness of various salts for fractionation of proteins. This will be explained in terms of Hoffman's series. Salts are present in fractionated protein. These must be removed for obtaining salt free protein for next step in purification, especially in ion exchange chromatography. Dialysis is effective way of removing small molecules such as salts from macromolecules such as protein. How to perform dialysis will also be covered in presentation. Protein purification is vital for characterization of protein. 
such as its molecular weight, isoelectric point, amino acid composition, amino acid sequence, structure determination which requires use of techniques such as X-ray crystallography, circular dichroism and spectroscopy, binding studies with ligand, measuring specific activities and specificities of enzymes and for measuring other biological activity where these functions as receptor, hormone, growth factor. Further, for applications in the food and pharmaceutical industry, a high level of protein purity is essential. Purification of protein means that the desired proteins are separated from undesired proteins. It also includes removal of non-protein components. Purified proteins are obtained by employing a number of techniques and thus usually purification of proteins involve multi-step procedures. Proteins are first extracted from biological material such as tissue, bacterium, fungus. Homogenization of biological material in presence of buffer at low temperature is an effective way for extraction of proteins. At times, cell wall of bacterium requires harsh treatment such as sonication, grinding in presence of glass beads. Cell homogenate may have proteolytic enzymes and thus cocktail of proteolytic inhibitors are used during homogenization and also during purification. Low temperature helps in minimizing proteolytic action. Membrane proteins are extracted by incorporating detergent in buffer. Crude extract will contain a complex mixture of proteins from cell cytoplasm. An additional component such as nucleic acids, carbohydrates, cofactors and nutrients. Debris are removed by centrifugation and supernatant is recovered. The supernatant is referred as crude protein extract. Crude preparations of extracellular proteins can be obtained by removing the cells by centrifugation. Fractionation is the process of precipitation of desired protein from crude extract. It also helps in removal of contaminating material. It results in enrichment of desired protein. Proteins differ in solubility which depends on the concentration of salts, polarity of solvent, pH of the buffer and the temperature. Some or all of these variables can be manipulated to precipitate specific proteins while others remain soluble. Uh, dear students, by now it should be clear what we mean by fractionation. Fractionation is first step in protein purification. The technique of fractionation is applied after extraction of protein. A common step to purify a protein from a crude extract is by precipitation in a solution with a high ionic strength solution. Protein precipitation is usually done with ammonium sulphate as salt. Different proteins precipitate in different concentration of ammonium sulphate. Thus, separating the overall proteins into several fractions. High molecular weight proteins precipitate in lower concentration of ammonium sulphate. Lower molecular weight proteins will precipitate at high salt concentration. Salt fractionation of protein does not usually lead to a 
highly purified protein. It helps in elimination of unwanted proteins and concentration of the sample in which the desired protein is there. Salts in the solution are then removed for the purification of proteins in subsequent step either by dialysis or by using the gel exclusion chromatographic techniques. This diagram depicts the effect of salt concentration on solubility of protein. At low concentration of salt, solubility increases with increase in salt concentration. This is referred as salting in. Further increase in salt concentration does not result in change in solubility. However, at sufficiently high concentration of salt, solubility of protein decreases with increase in salt concentration. This results in precipitation of protein from solution. This is referred as salting out. Salting out is an effective means for purification which explores the reduced solubility of certain proteins at very high ionic strength. Each protein molecule in solution is uniformly layered by an essential layer of hydration by water molecules which enable the molecules to repel each other and stay in solution. As more and more salt is added to the protein, the solubility of salt added gradually tends to become higher than the protein. Owing to the increased affinity of salt molecules for water over protein molecules, the hydration cell around the protein molecule is thus gradually displaced by the increasing ionic concentrations in the solvent. In other words, the protein molecules are thus stripped off of their hydrated layer, allowing the hydrophobic interactions between protein molecules to predominate, which leads to aggregation and precipitation of protein. It is important to note that salting out occurs at high concentration. Use of salt at very high concentration also cause further increase in surface tension, reducing the protein solubility leading to its aggregation and precipitation. Precipitation of proteins by salts does not usually lead to a highly purified protein, but it can assist in removal of some unwanted bulk proteins in a mixture and also in concentration of the sample. Ammonium sulphate is widely used an effective chemical because it is highly soluble, cheap, less toxic and stabilizes most proteins or enzymes. Its solubility is 4.1 molar at 25 degree centigrade. 761 grams of ammonium sulphate can be added to 1 liter of water. Saturation of ammonium sulphate does not vary much between 4 degree centigrade and 25 degree centigrade. Desired protein is fractionated by first using low concentration of ammonium sulphate, which does not precipitate desired protein, but may precipitate other proteins. Then concentration of ammonium sulphate is raised to allow precipitation of desired protein. These two concentrations of ammonium sulphate are referred as cutoff concentrations. Lower concentration of ammonium sulphate removes some of the undesired protein and higher concentration allow precipitation of desired protein. Some of the undesired proteins will also remain in supernatant. The cutoff concentration of ammonium sulphate 
will be different for different proteins and is required to be determined experimentally. A typical protocol will require treating of fixed volume of sample with different amount of ammonium sulphate for obtaining different saturation level of ammonium sulphate. Sample is kept stirred while addition of ammonium sulphate. Sample is then kept for 2 to 4 hours at 4 degree and then centrifuged at 10,000 G for 20 minutes. Pellet and supernatant are collected. Presence of desired protein in pellet or supernatant or both are checked. Lowest cutoff of ammonium sulphate is the highest concentration of ammonium sulphate which does not result in precipitation of desired protein. Highest cutoff of ammonium sulphate is the lowest concentration of ammonium sulphate which results in precipitation of desired protein. In actual experiment of salt fractionation, protein sample is first treated with lower cutoff concentration of ammonium sulphate and the precipitate is removed. The supernatant is collected and then concentration of ammonium sulphate is raised to highest cutoff level by taking into account the already added ammonium sulphate during lower cutoff treatment. Sample is then kept at 4 degree for 2 to 4 hours and centrifuged at 10,000 G for 20 minutes. Pellet containing desired protein is then dissolved in buffer and analyzed. A standard table is available in textbooks for calculating gram quantities of ammonium sulphate which are required to be added for obtaining desired saturation level. Ammonium sulphate is acidic and therefore, pH during addition of ammonium sulphate needs to be checked and adjusted to 7.0 if required. The stepwise precipitations of proteins by addition of increasing amount of ammonium sulphate to the crude extract with intermittent centrifugation step is known as ammonium sulphate cuts amount of um, solid ammonium sulphate which is to be added to a given volume of protein extract to achieve desired percentage saturation can be looked up in the tables. Ammonium sulphate in solid powdered form should be added slowly in small batches with continuous stirring at low temperature to allow a uniform increase in concentration and ensure rapid equilibration. After all the ammonium sulphate that has been weighed out has been added and solubilized, the salt containing protein mixture is allowed to stand for some time to allow precipitation of proteins to recovery by the centrifugation. The effectiveness of the different ions towards protein precipitation was established by French Hoffmeister in 1888. Ordering of cations and anions in order of their effectiveness is called Hoffmeister series. This series is depicted in the slide. Between the cations and anions, the anions have the greatest effect on protein precipitation. A strongly hydrated anion and weakly hydrated cation stabilize protein. Weakly hydrated anion and strongly hydrated cation destabilize the protein. Ions listed in earlier in the series decrease the solubility of non-polar molecules and strengthen hydrophobic interactions. This results in salting out of protein. Ions listed towards the end form strong ionic interactions with the protein that disrupt hydrogen bonding and thus contributes to the denaturation of the protein. Increase in surface tension of water by salt follows the Hoffmeister series. 
salts which favor salting out raise the surface tension of water the highest. Ammonium sulfate is the most commonly chosen reagent for salting out. Dear students, by now you understand effectiveness of salting out method in fractionation of protein. This step is applied in crude extract and is used as a first step in protein purification. The technique helps in concentration of protein by its pre-precipitation with chosen concentration of ammonium sulphate. Of course, the precipitated protein is contaminated with salts and salts are to be removed before employing next step of purification. Fractionated proteins are dissolved in buffer and ammonium sulphate is present in abundant amount in dissolved protein solution. One of the most widely used methods to achieve this is to dialyze the solution. Let us have a look at it. Figure shows a typical protein dialysis setup. Protein solution is filled in dialysis bag which is tied at both ends. Dialysis bag is prepared from semi permeable membrane, usually of a cellulose membrane. A small molecules such as salt can pass through the pores of membrane, whereas large molecules such as protein cannot pass through the pores of membrane and these are retained inside the bag. Pores of membrane are larger than the size of the small molecules, but smaller than the size of large molecules. Dialysis membranes are commercially available. After removing greasy material, one end of membrane is tied and sample is placed in sac. Then other end is tied. Dialysis sac is then placed in a beaker containing buffer. Buffer is then stirred by employing magnetic stirrer. Temperature of buffer is maintained at 4 degree centigrade so that protein is not inactivated. Usually in 2 hours of stirring, concentration of small molecules inside and outside will become equal. At that point, buffer is replaced in beaker and buffer is stirred. This is repeated several times. If protein is fractionated with ammonium sulphate, ammonium sulphate will be present in protein sample and the same will be dialyzed out in buffer. As long as ammonium sulphate is dialyzed out, its presence can be tested in buffer outside in dialysis bag. It is very easy to test presence of ammonium sulphate in solution. It can be detected by adding few drops of barium chloride solution to the buffer. If it turns milky, it indicates presence of ammonium sulphate. Absence of white turbidity or precipitate indicates completion of dialysis process. Sample after dialysis can be recovered after cutting upper end of bag. Dialysis will increase the volume of the enzyme solution because water molecules from the buffer may tend to move into the bag due to osmotic effect. Thus, it is necessary to leave an air gap inside of bag to prevent its bursting by acquiring more water molecules from outside. In this lecture, we have looked at the salt fractionation of proteins in detail. It is one of the most common and primary steps of protein purification, which helps to fractionate the proteins and further concentrate it. The fraction containing the target protein can then be further subjected to additional purification steps. We have discussed the concept of salting out, the Hoffmeister series, 
the importance of ammonium sulfate as a precipitating agent. We have understood what is fractionation and how it is achieved and also seen how dialysis is carried out to remove salt from the precipitated protein. Dear students, from this lecture, I believe that you are benefited. You will be able to use this basic technique of protein purification in your routine research exercises. I hope that you can make advantage of this presentation in your research endeavor. Thank you.